Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. Today I'm going to be doing an installation of a ProPride 3P1400 hitch. This is an anti-sway hitch. Uh, basically it eliminates sway. This video is going to be void of my normal banner. We're going to get right into the installation because there's a lot of steps and we want to cover this as best as possible so that we can make sure that whenever we install it on uh, this uh, RV uh, that this truck can definitely handle the load without any problems and I can uh, safely protect my investment. So let's jump into it. Have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Now there are dealer network that's available that might be able to do this installation for you. However, as you can see, I've got a DIYer style garage because I'm a DIYer and it's not a big deal to do this installation yourself as long as you take your time and read the instructions. The first thing I want you to be aware of is it will come from FedEx, uh, in this case coming to Northeast Ohio from their location in Michigan. Uh, we got this in one day which was spectacular. Uh, we ordered it, next day here it is and it's not even but uh, noon right now so that was really quick. Uh, you're going to get four boxes essentially and of course all the components in these boxes put together one hitch. Uh, the only thing that we ordered in addition to the hitch that's above and beyond is the extension kit which I'll show that to you and that's because the hitch is a little longer you may have to extend your chains you may have to extend your plug you know your seven-way pin and uh, if you don't use it if you don't need to use it uh, just return it in uh, unused condition back to ProPride and they will definitely refund your money for that so let's go ahead and open this up take a look at what's involved inside the first thing you want to do when you get all these boxes is uh, look at all the parts look at all the components make sure that you can lay them out and identify them and go through the manual to help you with that Got everything out of the box and in my case I want to mention again a couple of things that might be different from yours as far as when you get it when you order it this is again the P 1400 the 3 P 1400 which is the uh, heaviest that they offer as far as the hitch I want you to know that if you're kind of undecided on which way to go with your hitch weight uh, call them up so they can get an idea of what they need to suggest to you because they are the experts uh, you don't want to make guesses on this because these items are heavy you don't want to be shipping them back and forth now going into the differences I did opt for a two and a half inch goes into the hitch or the receiver of course I don't need to run an adapter and run a smaller tube and we also again got the extension kit as far as the packaging that came with this system uh, they had the instructions in the uh, long skinny box one of the lighter boxes now, as far as everything laid out here you would think that those boxes seemed a little bulky well it's because of expansive foam that's being used for packaging and they did a really good job protecting all the components everything was very solid felt really good whenever it was delivered nothing rattling around so let's go ahead and start uh, putting this stuff together. All right, guys, so here we are. We're at the trailer, which is a 2020 Rockwood 2604WS, and the truck, which in this case is a uh, 2019 F250 Super Duty. Since the receiver and the hitch ball are relatively the same height, we're gonna have uh, a situation that'll probably show up for a lot of drivers that have taller trucks. It seems like all the trucks are getting taller, even though the hitches are getting taller too. But first, I wanted to talk about the very first thing you need to be doing and that is familiarizing yourself with the 1-800 number that they have in the front of the book and the reason that I say that is I have yet to call and not get a person to uh, answer my call immediately uh, I guess as far as texting I haven't done that yet but I think that they're pretty responsive to text too um, you're gonna get a live person you're not gonna get somebody that just you know is going to relay the information so whenever you're doing the installation give them a call every time I call I get somebody on the phone and I'm not an expert I'm just the guy doing the installation and showing you as we go along the steps that are required I'm gonna have questions and the manual pretty much answers most of those it's pretty clear it's set 
there's some confusion as far as people being able to read and comprehend or see and comprehend and there's nothing wrong with that so that's what we're going to do today we're going to give you a visual of what the instruction booklet says so other than having that 800 number handy in case you have any questions uh, the first thing i'm going to do is kind of what they call a pre-installation prep i'm pulling the propane tanks off of my rv and I'm going to be pulling the old hardware. I have some old snap-up brackets on here that we use just to get the RV home. So I'm gonna take those off because we no longer need those. Those are for chains in the old style. So let's jump into that. All right, as you can see, I don't have any tools. I don't have any parts, but I do have the manual and it's because it's the next step and it's really important. And that is measurements. You need to know what the measurements are of your vehicle whenever you're perfectly flat and you're not loaded with anything because you wanna return your vehicle back to those settings as close as possible. And the only way you can do that is if you know what they are to start with. So I've already measured the truck, I've got all the measurements at all four corners, and I've also measured my hitch height. The hitch height, the ball height, that's gonna come into play here whenever we get into the first step, and that's basically setting up the bar. It's the part that's gonna be used the most as far as connecting and disconnecting the RV. Now, as far as the terminology that's being used in the manual, there's pictures that go along with everything that they're referring to. And if you just take the time to sound it all out, read the manual and do the steps, it'll come across clearer. So the first thing you wanna do is determine your tow vehicle receiver height. This is a receiver. On most other weight distribution systems, you know this as a shank that goes into there. They refer to it as the hitch bar receiver. This is the part that has the plate on it that you have to determine if they go up or down, which we'll talk about. Don't, don't get confused on it, it's very simple. And the other side of the two-piece hitch bar system is what they refer to as the hitch end. So you have the hitch end of the hitch bar, and then you have the second piece, which is the receiver end of the hitch bar, and that's the part with the plates on it. When you measure the receiver on your vehicle, you're gonna measure from the top of the tube, the square, down to the ground. And that's gonna be your receiver height. As far as the ball height, you're gonna measure from the top of the ball, this is with the RV perfectly level, the top of the ball to the ground. That's gonna be called your trailer ball height. As you could probably guess, most vehicles, the receiver is not gonna be the exact same height as the hitch height. However, basically what it comes down to, whenever we mount that head assembly on the ball, it's gonna be five and a half inches lower than what this is. So you have to adjust the hitch bar so that the angle's correct and it gets in there. And there's some other things we have to point out too. Now the other thing that they do that I think is really nice is whatever box the parts come in, that's the box that's also gonna have the hardware to assemble those pieces. In this kit, there's gonna be three bolts. Two of these bolts are identical, one's a little bit shorter. Identify the shorter one, that's gonna be your pivot bolt. That's gonna be the bolt that allows it to pivot. However, these are going to be the bolts that will tighten and hold the pivot in position in conjunction with this pin. Now they have you start off with a couple of washers and I'll show you what this pin does. It's, it's a basic function. It's very easy to understand once you realize what it does and where it goes. And let me give you a hint. It goes on top, regardless of what you read or how it's read or how you translate it, it goes on top of this here because you have a couple different places. Again, we'll get to it uh, that it can go. It can either go here or down here. Well, whichever one's on top, that's where it goes. So let's go ahead and get this together for me. Now in my case, the difference between my tow vehicle height, where, where this is going to slide into my receiver tube, and the hitch bar height is four inches. In my case, the plates are going to be down. Again, this is the, the receiver, and you can see the plates are mainly down from that receiver tube. Again, if you flip it upside down, they would be mainly up from the receiver bar. So in my case, what they're trying to do is help me out in determining which hole I need to be at without having that head assembly already mounted. And the way that they do that is tell you that whatever the difference is between your tow vehicle number, the height in which this is gonna be in the truck, and the hitch box number, which is this part here, this goes into the hitch box, should be roughly the same. 
All right, so we're a few days after that installation and I've made other adjustments to my hitch bar and I've actually moved my plates to point up instead of down because I had some tweaking to do. I want you to expect to have to do the same. Don't use those numbers as a hard fast rule because there might be a change that needs to be made once you take it out for a tow, a test drive. And that's what I did. Once I took it for a test drive, I seen that my angle on my trailer was a little bit different, so I made some changes. But the reason that I'm shooting this part of the video is I was just looking at how I initially set it up and there's one thing that I didn't make clear and I'm going to make clear now to make sure that your hitch bar is set up correctly you've got to take your hitch height your tow vehicle hitch height number which is this one here and that difference that difference in height that you get a measurement of which in my case was four inches um, that's going to be the hitch box height number and that's what this represents this bar here because this will be sliding into the hitch box you need to make sure that whenever you set this up and find the right hole for this to be mounted in that you take basically the the top of this bar here and measure from what this imaginary line is to the top of this bar here and that would be four inches now part of my problem was I calculated out the numbers not including an extra half an inch because this is a two and a half inch tube that I have optioned in in your case you're going to be probably dead on because you're most likely going to have a two inch bar you know here also so that was part of my problem but getting back to determining which hole you're going to put this into which I will show on the video here we'll, we'll revert back in time <laughs> and we'll show you what it looked like as far as bolting it together originally and the bar height measurement from this here to the top of this one here should be roughly that four inch mark in my case now in yours it could be different refer to the back of the manual they just reprinted all the manuals and they've got better descriptions as far as pictures and you're going to see that those pictures will represent what your bar setup should roughly look like now as far as the bolts and the holes they go into and where that pin is and how you should be determining the angle and all that let's go ahead and go back to that old footage which isn't that old and we'll finish out this installation before we put these two together we want to put this in this helps with the angle for the sway control again there's four washers here and you may need to add a couple washers for your angle to be exact however I'm just going to go with the two that they suggest and don't be discouraged you might be taking this apart again to put in a couple more washers but not a big deal so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in but not a big deal so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in but not a big deal so I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in so now at this point I need to start putting some bolts in these holes you're going to get the shortest bolt. There's three bolts again, one of them shorter than the rest. That's going to be the pivot bolt. Now I realize that these are oblong shaped and you think, oh, they pivot, the bolt pivots in there, that's gotta be the pivot bolts. No, that's the pivot adjustment lockdown bolts. What you need is this, this is the pivot. This is actually what it pivots on. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the pivot hole. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the pivot hole. So we're going to go ahead and put it in the pivot hole. Now one of the points that I want to bring up, and apparently there's a lot of confusion with this, is you might accidentally want to put it in here. Well, it doesn't go in there. The only way it would go in there is if the hitch plates are up. They're not up, they're down. So it's going to pivot down here. Now once we have that bolt in there, I'm going to put a lock washer and a nut just to hold it in place. And I want to show you something else that seems to be confused a lot. And that is this pin placement. If you have your plates down, if you have your plates up, it doesn't make a difference. This pin's going to be on top. It's going to be on the top hole. It's going to stop this from going any higher than that. That's where you get your angle locked in at. And we're gonna check this because once this is all locked in and it's tightened with this bar up against that pin, 
we should be perpendicular with this. This should be darn near exactly flat, perpendicular with the ground, or more importantly, the hitch box whenever that's mounted. That way when you're towing down the road, there's no angle difference. That's something that the Hensley hitch, you have to where it could potentially be forcing down or up and putting stress on it that shouldn't be because you can't adjust your angle for the uh, hitch box. So we'll get onto that whenever we get a little bit closer. But in the meantime, we're now ready to go ahead and put in our pivot lock and bolts. Let me go ahead and put in that one. I'll put a washer on the backside and a nut. So we have the longer bolts, you have the bolt head, you have a washer, you put it through, you then put on another washer, and then you have another nut. And then we'll go ahead and put this bolt down here. Again, just loose fitting at this point. I'll snug it up a little bit, but we, we don't know if we're gonna necessarily be going back to uh, this pin again and putting in more washers. Uh, so we don't wanna you know, crank down torque and do all the work uh, when it may not even be necessary at this point. But we do wanna get it really close. The other thing I want to point out is, you can see I put my tailgate down to have a work area. At some point the tailgate's got to go up because I'm going to be working on the hitch and the tailgate obstructs me. But take your time, these parts are heavy, and just don't put yourself in a situation that's uncomfortable. There's no sense in me working on the ground whenever I can work at waist high. So I suggest you do the same thing. That way you stay comfortable and you don't get frustrated just because of fatigue. All right, so I went ahead and put my tailgate back up and now we have to put the hitch pin in to hold the uh, bar in place, the uh, receiver part. And of course they include this in the kit. There's so many parts that they include. It's really nice. I mean, they include wrenches and everything. Um, I'll have a lock on here, obviously, because I don't want anybody to walk away with this, but uh, I like the fact they give you one to get you started. Uh, somebody may not have any at all. Now, in this case, what we're wanting to do is raise this up as high as possible and make sure that it's level. For the reason, of course, that we don't want to put any strain on this hitch box whenever it's in place. I can already tell I need to pull my truck a little bit more forward. That would give me more room to work in the first place. You can see how important it is for you guys visually to be able to see this as it is me. I like to be able to see visually what it should look like. So at this point, I'm going to raise this up and I'm going to snug down these bolts and then I'm going to see if this comes out to be level. Now in my case, I have a small jack here. You can use a floor jack. You don't have to use any jack. You could just actually have somebody hold this up for you. And the only reason is, is you just want to get this bar here up against the tilt pin. Let me show you here. You can see the tilt pin is up against this bar now and it's giving you the angle that you need to help with of course your weight distribution. Once this is up against like this, like I said, lifting this, tightening this, basically making it pivot on that pivot bolt and these two adjustment bolts are uh, ready to be tightened down to hold it in position. Uh, you're going to use a, a 15 16 uh, wrench, uh, whether it be a uh, ratchet or whatever you want to use. I've got an impact. You've got to torque these down though with a torque wrench, which I have, uh, before you go any further. But I'm just going to snug these down. Now these plates flex a lot. They flex an incredible amount uh, to squeeze this bar once they're in place. What's really nice is in the back of the manual, they show you every torque spec for all the bolts that you're going to be manipulating and playing with. And in this case, this one is a 200 foot pound torque. I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down. And if I have to, I'll break them loose and retorque them uh, with maybe less washers or more washers in this tilt pin. So now at this point that we have that bar basically adjusted, we're moving into mounting the jacks. Now if you don't know, the jacks are utilized to load the spring bars up with the weight that's needed for the weight distribution. No longer do you have to do the old snap chain snap up deal. 
those jacks will do it all for you. So this is the hardware that came in the box with the jacks. The jacks, there's not a right or left. They're both identical in every way. One of the things that might be confused upon to some extent is uh, what these plates are for, which one of these bolts you're going to use, and more importantly, what is the front edge of the jack? Because they do have these guide bars here that are to help with the uh, tension bar that comes down and pulls up your spring bars. Um, that's for a guide so it doesn't get caught on the frame or anything weird like that. Some people think that's the, the leading edge. Uh, you know, it's this, it's the, it's the base plate. It's the plate that the jack is mounted on. So let me show you what you need to be looking at whenever you're hooking it up to the RV. And the first thing we have to do is get a measurement from the ball, the center of the ball, to where the front edge is going to come up against. So we're wanting to take a measurement from basically uh, the center of the ball, where the center of the ball would be, um, or the edge where the center of the ball would be, 26 inches back. Now there's a, a plus or minus variance of one to one and a half inches that can be utilized for that front leading edge of the uh, jack. But first I wanna mark my 26 inch mark and again, that's the center of the ball there. And what we're trying to do is make it to where the jacks are straight up and down when they're pulling on those weight distribution bars for you. So 26 inches is right here. We'll go ahead and mark that. I'm gonna mark it with a paint pen. That way I can check this over a period of time to see if it's moved around at all. But I also wanna see if the jack will actually make it to that point without interfering with anything here. So let's go ahead and get a jack up here and there's two things we have to look at there. Other than this leading edge, that's one. The other thing is, uh, is there's any wiring or anything, any ground wires in the back, that's two. And if, actually there's three things. Um, how much slop we have on the saddle of the jack and when it goes over top of the frame and that plate, what we need to do with that as far as positioning it in there. So let's go ahead and get the, the forward and aft measurement first uh, with the jack on there. You guys may not understand or know, but these hooks go to the outside because the weight distribution bars are gonna be out here. And as far as the leading edge, yeah, looks like we're okay there. Um, we have to worry about the propane tank cover and the propane tank and all that, so um, we might, might have to move it back an inch. Again, we have a variance of plus or minus an inch and a half, so I could actually go back you know, another inch and a half, which is about there. So what I'm gonna do is actually take one of my propane tanks, set it up on here, and then take the tank cover and slide it on and see if it interferes with any of this. And also then we're gonna check this slop. You can see this slop here and if I need to run that plate. First, let's check the propane tank interference. Now, as hopefully you can see here, uh, the jack is definitely back from that 26 inch mark and the propane tank cover, if it's in this position here, uh, at that point doesn't interfere uh, with any operation of the jack. Uh, I'm going to measure then and see how much further back we moved uh, to get to this point. And we're at an inch and a half. So it did move an inch and a half back. Again, the most important thing is the up and down positioning of this jack. It needs to be vertical up and down whenever this bar is extended and pulling up the weight distribution bars. Now there's things that you can do, such as removing your propane tank base and you can move it forward. That would put the tanks a little bit closer to the jack and might cause it to where the jack will interfere with somewhat with the cover, the propane tank cover. Or if you want to, you can go with soft propane tank covers. I know I did that in the past. Uh, they make some really nice ones. But in this case, I shouldn't have any problem. Uh, however, if I feel as if I want this thing to be a little bit more forward because I see an angle to it or something, I'll go ahead and remount my propane tanks a little bit closer to the jack uh, to take up that space. Okay, for me, I just made a simple modification and that was uh, removing the screws that were holding down the propane tanks uh, and loosening these. And I moved the propane tanks, the base, forward. Now, I'm getting ready to re-secure this down. However, if you have to do any kind of modification to your tank mount, 
you may be needing to um, move it around a little bit, make some adjustments whenever you put on uh, the bracket, the cross bracket that goes underneath the A-frame, which we'll get to that part of the installation. So what I'm trying to tell you is if you've done just like I did and move this around a little bit, don't re-secure it all back down and tighten it down because you may be getting back to that point uh, to make some other adjustments for mounting. So if you've got it loose, just keep it loose. And uh, again, I tested this and I am within one inch. I have to move back one inch to the 27 inch mark and everything mounts fine, including the propane tank cover, the hard cover. It just pushes up against the back of the jack, but it's all plastic on the uh, propane tank cover. That's an inexpensive cover. It's not gonna hurt it. And it will flex around this so all is good so now let's go ahead and show you what you need to be looking at when the jack is actually going on so to take up the space of the frame between these two plates that's what this spacer is for and I just need to use the short bolt I'm going to use the nut that's provided that's actually on the long bolt but I'm going to use it for the short bolt and what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and run this in and uh, through this hole and then we're going to lower this whole assembly down onto the frame uh, wiggling it, not forcing it, and wiggling it down into position. And then once we get it exactly lined up where we want, we're going to tighten this bolt down and then I'm going to tighten the jam nut to kind of hold it in place. Uh, you can utilize the wrench that is given to you that is used to crank the jacks up and down, the ratcheting wrench. Uh, it's the same size. Again, that's kind of a nice touch, uh, these tools. <laughs> I mean, I have ratcheting wrenches myself, but I, you know, I'm a mechanic, so uh, the chances of you having these types of tools, maybe not that great. So the fact they include them, another star on the rating scale for those guys. Uh, we're getting close, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, lower this back down on the frame now that we have that spacer in place. And out here, what I'm doing is positioning it to where it's right on that 27 inch mark for me. Again, yours will, your mileage will vary. <laughs> It'll be a little bit different potentially for you, but I'm in good shape out here. So now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and snug this down uh, to hold it all in place. Remember, you don't have to get this very snug because all this is just doing is just helping with the lateral movement. Uh, from left to right uh, it doesn't hold the jack on uh, this is what holds the jack on this bracket here which goes up through the bottom and we're going to be placing it catty corner uh, I guess you could say from corner to corner and we're going to uh, tighten down these bolts which use a 9 16 inch socket and it's only 20 foot pounds that's not very hard at all so we're going to remove the nuts and washers off of this u-bolt we're going to slide the u-bolt up through and then uh, again tighten it down at 20 foot pounds all right so that's what it all looks like tightened down you can see now that i'm at that mark i'm going to make sure you guys know that is the leading edge of the jack right here not this part this part so we're good there i'm going to move the tank cover off i'm going to move the propane tanks again so i can go to the other side uh, match what i just did here and then uh, we're going to work on some more installation hopefully before the rain falls here all right, so now we're into what they refer to as the frame bracket. This is the piece that mounts underneath your gas bottles, basically, and the uh, gas bottle mount, the propane tank mount. And you're gonna get a couple U-bolts, a couple of brackets. These brackets will go underneath like so. We'll show you that whenever we get to it. Lock washers and nuts for the U-bolts. These are for the weight distribution. Let me move these out of the way. We'll get to these in just a bit, but in the meantime, we're gonna mark the frame of the RV just like we did before, but instead of going 27 inches, which was where I had to go, or 26 inches, which most of you may go, uh, I'm going to be going to 22 inch. And that one, you can be within a half of an inch, plus or minus a half an inch. So basically 21 and a half, 22, or 22 and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out 22. That's from the uh, center of the trailer coupler back, and we're gonna mark it. Where we mark it is where these U-bolts are gonna go down over the frame and connect with this bar. We're gonna loosely tighten all this stuff, but let's go ahead and uh, move forward. 
But you can see my hand come through here, and it's because my propane tank mount is actually above the frame. Um, if yours is right on the frame, uh, you may have to move the again the propane tank mount out of the way, or you might have to do a, a couple of holes potentially uh, for the brackets to go through. It's not a big deal. It's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, don't don't be afraid. I mean, my old RV that I had, my '92, the propane tank mount was welded to the frame and it just took a, a chisel and a, a hammer with a couple of hits and it comes right off it's not a big deal and 90 percent of the time you're probably in my boat to where you either have the space like this or you can unbolt it it just unbolts so it's not a big deal so just to be aware uh nothing to be afraid of there but we're going to go ahead and put these in at the 22 inch mark uh let's see if i can just wiggle it in there we go and in my case, I have a, a battery disconnect uh, switch here, and I've got to make sure that that doesn't come into play. And I also have my uh, breakaway, my brake controller uh, breakaway. So again, these are just little variances that each trailer has that you just have to accommodate. Now this bar is symmetrical, so there's no front, back, side. But you're gonna basically put the uh, brackets just, just like this. Well, we'll get this side started first. You might be, you know, better off with a, another pair of hands to do this uh yeah i mean i could support this with with a jack or something to make it a little bit easier but uh we're just going to go ahead and try to snug this in uh utilizing what i have right now and that's uh ingenuity <laughs> all right let's go ahead and get this one started and secured and we'll go ahead and get the other side of that u-bolt started All right, so now we'll move to the other side. We'll go ahead and start those. The plate goes on. And you can see that with this plate, there is a lot of adjustment that can be done there, um, left to right. So we'll play around with that whenever we get closer to uh, mounting the yoke, because this is the rear support for the yoke assembly. This is one of those design changes they made to make it better than the original Hensley hitch design. Uh, this basically takes away those torsion bars that always have a problem, it seems. All right, I'm right on the 22 inch mark on this side. We're gonna pretty much leave these loose, not very tight at all, until it's time to put the yoke in here in the uh, uh, rear support. Now for what everybody's been waiting for. <laughs> Not me though. Um, now you can get a helper. Uh, I suggest that you do if you don't feel comfortable lifting something that's relatively heavy. Um, I know that I can handle this. So let's go ahead and uh, get the main hitch unit and slide it on here and uh, get it fastened so we can start working with the rest of the adjustments that are needed. Watch your fingers. That's the main thing, watch your fingers. Wow, this opening is huge that this thing goes into. That's amazing. So once we have it uh, pretty much lined up, we're gonna get these over the center latches to pull it in the rest of the way. Although I have a slew of breaker bars, I'm glad that they gave me one. I can just leave it for this. Now, if you're finding that you know, it's kind of hard. It's like, wow, I can't get this thing to go. Just go ahead and uh, move these in. Uh, just screw them in a little bit, and that'll allow them to uh, fasten a little bit easier. Now, you definitely want them pretty tight, but not something that you're having a hard time with. That may be a little bit looser than I like, but we'll do that for now. Then same on this side. You should always pull, not push away from you for safety reasons. Yeah, it's just a little bit too tight still. So we'll go in. That looks pretty darn good. Let's see if this works out. 
Yep, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is lubricate the ball. Uh, you wanna put what they refer to as a marine grade grease. Basically, you have to get a grease, uh, which the marine part of it suggests, that resists water, that water won't wash away. Because this is gonna be mounted on here for a period of time until you need to lubricate all this again, which periodic maintenance is needed. However, uh, you wanna put a decent grease on here and uh, that way you don't have to worry about it losing out or disappearing whenever it gets wet over a period of time which of course this gets shielded for the most part but you get the idea so let me go ahead and get some grease on here get this all liberally coated and then we will back up underneath the uh, rv here i'll have to raise the the jack which i can do that now actually we'll raise it up and uh keep the vehicles aligned as best as possible. We want them straight on. We want this to be a, a straight on setup. So straight back, the RV straight, the truck is straight, this is straight, and we can lower this down. And I'll talk about that. Now that I got the truck backed up, right up against it, pretty much lined up, maybe it's just a little forward. I'm gonna let the jack down, but I'm not gonna put all the weight of the RV down on the uh, truck. I'm just doing this enough so that we can make this latch connect. Right about there. Let's go ahead and take some weight off. Put this down. That's good. That's something I couldn't do before is drop my tailgate <laughs> with my hitch. It just wouldn't you know, clear. Didn't have enough room. It hit the jack, so this is kind of a nice change for me. All right, so now we're moving into the weight distribution part of it, finally. Definitely talk to them about what they recommend for you to run on your vehicle. I went with the 1,400 pound bar as recommended by Brent, and he brought up the reason why, which was a very good point, and that is I'm on the top end of that 1,000 pound mark whenever this trailer is fully loaded with all its cargo and everything. He said if I ever go with another vehicle in the future, I'd have to get a different bar especially if I went heavier. He said you could just run a 1400 and just be, you know, a little less tension on it. Just enough that it does the job. And that's what's the good thing about these spring bar links is there's so much adjustment and the jacks too. There's so many adjustments that you can do to get yourself really close to what you want. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and slide this spring bar uh, link in the center hole. That's what the instructions say. We're just gonna let it hang just like that. I'm gonna do that to the other side too so we can uh, keep this symmetrical because once you attach these to the weight distribution bars you know there's there's no way once the bars are in their in their uh, pockets which I'll show you that um, that you're going to be able to really take that off unless you really do a lot of loosening of things so that's where that stands right now and now we're running to the front here we're gonna move to the front and we're going to remove uh, there's a uh, a plate right here. It's just held in with a uh, bolt and a nut and that's all it is right there. You can see the orientation this half moon goes around this big area here but underneath. So now with this removed we're going to install the round bar up inside and then once it's inside they gave you these little discs in the uh, hardware kit. Uh, they're going to go inside here and just stay in place and then you're going to slide everything up. Now the best thing to do at this point though is lubricate everything including this disc. The grease will help keep it in that spot. But yeah we're just going to lubricate uh, all of this here. This bar um, up top everywhere that's going to be rubbing basically inside here and then we're going to put the disc in place just like I said. We're going to reposition all of that back up inside and we're going to uh, put the nut and the uh, bolt on the plate to hold it back in place where it was. And whenever we tighten it down, it's just gonna be a snug fit because the plate pretty much seats itself. It doesn't really wanna pull out. It's just gonna hold it in place. So it's gonna be snug. Uh, that's why there's a nylock on the uh, nut uh, to keep it from basically backing out because it's not torqued or over torqued. So let me go ahead and uh, grease up these bars and that little disc and slide it all together. Go ahead and lubricate the bar a little bit on the top. Let's do quite a bit in here. A 
Now if you get a noise after a while, um, you need to put more grease in. Every thousand miles uh, or sooner if you get some noise. And the good thing is, guess what? There's a Zerk fitting right here that allow you to inject the grease without taking all this apart. That's just good thinking. All right, we'll go ahead and put this in. I'm gonna to try to position my hand on the bar so I can use my fingers to hold it from not dropping too far. And yeah, that's about there. We'll go ahead and get that little disc and you can see how sticky the grease is um, and how it'll hold the thing in place. Just like so. <laughs> you see, it didn't even allow it to slide. Wasn't that funny? You can kind of see why those bolts aren't necessarily needed to uh, keep everything snug. Because the bars kind of do the job themselves. So we'll go ahead and put this up in there. And again... The uh, bar's holding itself, essentially, at this point. That's just the, the nature of the design. And now we'll go ahead and snug this down. Make sure that's up in there good. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. That looks pretty darn good. Let's try a little bit more here. Yep, very happy with it. So that. I made an adjustment to mine because the bar was real close to this bar. Uh, I went ahead and put it in the bottom hole. I'm uh, putting the U-bolt through the link first and then these two nylon locking bolts will, uh, of course, hold it all together. You don't want to torque these all the way down uh, or you won't have any movement on the spring bar link. And of course you want to tighten these equally. You don't want one more than the other. Now as you can see, the bars are not vertical with the jack. The jack's not pulling them up vertically yet. The reason is, is the jack's all the way down. Whenever I actually put a load on this and I start to take the jacks and extend them upwards that's going to make these bars that are currently pointing down straighten out and when they straighten out this distance will be out here these will actually move to where this bar will straighten up so everything is very linear that's what you're looking for again I had to go back that inch out of the inch and a half variance and uh, it, it looks like it's off right now but again once we start going up that'll straighten out so we're almost there folks uh, if you haven't went and got a drink of water and taken a break yet uh, you deserve it so go do so just like I did however I've got storms moving in and I'm gonna have to try to hurry here uh, but I'll be very thorough uh, we're going to remove the cover this is a hitch cover this is what they call the hitch cover there's a couple of bolts right here that will uh, just come loose there's no nut to hold or anything else and um, if you want to use the wrench that they provided, um, it will work. And once you get them loose, they'll come out the rest of the way with your fingers. There you go. Yeah, I'm not very big at all. And then the hitch cover comes off. What we're going to do at this point is get the yoke, line that up, basically mount it to the assembly. And this is what connects the hitch head, the working portion, to the frame of the RV to keep the sway away. They've got this all together. They've got all the hardware placed where it needs to go. You don't have to assemble all this. They assembled what they could. That's why the yoke hardware is already on there. This is the mounting hardware for that. Now, whenever you take these loose, just pay attention to way th the way they go. Just so you know, there is an orientation and you could put this on upside down if you don't pay attention. These pieces here are loose. They are meant to be loose. Uh, all that's going to be adjusted out by taking a measurement a little bit later. This is the piece that's gonna go in that frame bracket. It's gonna go in between the two pieces. Uh, so those two posts that stand down will be here. And then we're gonna put that roller bolt in also. But one thing at a time, first the yoke. And I'm gonna pull the nuts and bolts off. There's no sense in me 
having those in there when they're going to be what hold it up there for me once I get it in position. Now there is a bushing. I want to show that to you real quick. There is a bushing that's in here. Don't take that out. If it does fall out, make sure you put it back in. I think I'm going to do this just a little bit backwards. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use post in the back to kind of hold this in place so I can lift this up. It's easier to lift up two points when a third is being supported. So you can see what I've done here is I've actually uh, taken this piece here. I'm going to put it up in between the two posts that are on the frame bracket. And then I'm going to put the uh, support bolt with the roller in between. I want you to see this because uh, it's not tricky, but it could be done wrong. So the bolt's going in, but before I put the bolt all the way in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, place that roller in between there. All right, so I have that bolt through. Uh, I did have to tap it with a hammer as these holes must have been slightly misaligned, just a little bit, uh, causing it not to just push through. So now that we have the bolt through, you can tighten it down with that same wrench they provided before. Go figure that out. This thing's coming in awful handy. The back is supported there. Makes it a lot easier for me to get this up and in position. You can see this is why you leave that bracket loose that's underneath the tanks uh, to make it a little bit easier to get this all lined up. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and pull this back out, put that one washer back in the way that it was before. There we go. Remember, we're just duplicating what was going on before. There was the bolt head, the washer, of course that bushing's still in there, another washer, and then it goes in, and same with the other side. So this bolt cannot be pushed in all the way. It has to be just barely in when you put the lock washer in, because there's no room for it. Uh, there's a spacer there that's built in, that's welded in to help keep this nut from turning. I'm gonna get this nut started until it hits that block. Then I'm gonna pull the bolt out and uh, push the nut in position. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten those down to 175 pound feet of torque. Same with the other side. Let's go ahead and move the bolt out. Put the lock washer in. Again, I know that's out of camera angle, but it's just what I did right in front of you there. I'm gonna put the impact on this just to get it going. Yeah, very, very tight. It's kind of nice because, you know, this still moves. It's part of the design. We're gonna lock that down whenever we get a measurement over here. It does clear my, my uh, plug. I wanna go ahead and tighten the other side as the rain is slowly starting. And what I'll do is uh, go ahead and get my torque wrench and torque this down. Again, it's 175 foot-pounds, so. It's just a little bit more than what my wrench does. That's why I went just slightly further after it clicked. We'll step over and we'll do the same on this side. Again, it's nice because these pieces that are welded in hold that nut for you. Now, if the nut, for whatever reason, decides to turn, it turns on you, just take and put a screwdriver head in here to make a wedge so it can't spin. So we're gonna go ahead and put the hitch cover back on, uh, snug that down, and then move on to the next step. So at this point, it's telling me that it's okay to disconnect the truck from the RV as long as the RV, the wheels are still chalked, which they are. <laughs> and the jacks down, we're going to just leave it just like it is because we're no longer, it's gonna be hard to remember this, we're no longer unhitching the ball part of it. We're unhitching the hitch bar. So let's go ahead and pull these pins, these S pins. Get this out of the way. Go ahead and set it back here. And this one too. Go ahead and over the center. Latches, loosen. Same here. There we go. God, this is gonna be so nice hooking up from now on without dealing with the ball and the bars and all that stuff in the same manner we used to. So now you can see I'm pushing my truck out of the way just among the parking pin. So everything is aligned very nicely. However, I still have to adjust the yoke, the uh, frame bracket, the yoke where the placement is on the frame bracket, and then the height here, uh, make sure the dimension is correct. 
and then we'll torque down these also. We'll, go, we'll get to that in a second. In the meantime, let me pull the truck out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and adjust this frame for the yoke uh, tail. That's what they refer to this as, a, is a yoke tail. We're gonna get it back to that 22 inch mark really close, really, really close. The nice thing is having that marked uh, will allow you to um, know when you're there again and when everything's centered. Move that around a little bit. Now they say that you're going to, you know, check this periodically to make sure everything is tight and still lined up. We uh, definitely want to make sure we get it really close to start with so that we're not making major changes later on. I want to move the little. Let's go ahead and check the other side. See there. And there, yeah, boy, these are really, really close. This looks really good, so I think I'm good here. Let's go ahead and snug this down enough that it don't want to move. Again, we're going to check these at a later time. And yes, I'll put the link for this wrench down below. I'm sure everybody's going to ask. I've used this forever. It is a godsend. Except when I have the wrong size. <laughs> Alright, so basically what I've done here is I've measured and the uh, yoke is parallel with the bottom of the frame and we're at an inch on both sides. So everything's lined up pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and torque these down. And what are we going to torque them to? Back to the manual. You guys always refer to the manual. It's there. These are going to be 60 foot-pounds, so 55 for the brackets and 60 for up here. That can be easily taken care of with my torque wrench. All right, so three-quarter inch on this one, and 11 sixteenths underneath. All right, so now that we've got everything pretty much set up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to back this up. This will be my first time. Uh, the vehicles are relatively level with each other and parallel. Uh, we haven't done much movement at all. And uh, whenever I back in, um, I'll be watching my camera. If you don't have a rear camera, maybe you wanna invest in one. They're not very expensive. Uh, if you get one that just goes on your license plate frame or, um, you can have a helper. As far as hitching up, the square, <laughs> this square here and that square there, that's incredible size difference. So I think that backing in should be easy, uh, but I might be naive. Uh, let's go ahead and try it though. doesn't seem overly complicated, but I'm sure I'll get into situations that that's not the case at all. However, today, that was straightforward. For the very first time, pretty darn easy. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get the over center latches uh, to where it's time for them to connect up. Now, if you want to, I've noticed that, you know, for pressure wise to get these connected, don't lay on the ground and pull it. Use your legs. Just go ahead and use your legs and kind of lean into it. There you go. That'll get that one up there. Makes it a lot easier. I mean, I'm just kind of using my leg as a lever. That seems a little easy. I'm gonna go ahead and make that just slightly tighter by making it one turn longer. There we go. Now, a lot of you might already know this. There's a lot of length here. You know, normally this ball would have been uh, right about uh, here. Yeah, right about here. So you have some length there. So you may have to buy the lengthening kit uh, for your uh, cables. Now, in my case, I don't know if I need it. 
um, but I probably will for the chains. Let's check that because, you know, your chains have to stretch further too. And yep, so I bought the kit. It depends on your vehicle, uh, what you may have to run into as far as changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my slide in on the RV. I'm gonna bring my stabilizing jacks all the way up. I just have them most of the way up. And I'm gonna put the weight on the truck here and uh, then do the weight distribution bars and see if I get a uh, measurement change that's uh, drastic. Let's see what kind of swat we got. The jack is up. It is uh, up off the ground. I wanted to make sure it's pretty clear. Uh, that's something that you need to note. Uh, if you have some sort of an extendable foot or some sort of a flip foot or something like that, you got to make sure that that's all tucked up out of the way uh, whenever you're transporting because the weight distribution bars could co come into contact with it during a real sharp turn. Remember, this thing will turn at 87 degrees. That's crazy. <laughs> I keep on saying it and I'm going to keep on saying it over and over again. So you got to make sure that those bars don't come into contact with it. So I have to make sure that I put my extension up before I, uh, um, you know, travel. Now, something else that we need to be clear on. They give you a wrench to tighten the weight distribution bars, okay? They give you a wrench for that. However, you can use a drill. Listen to what I said, a drill. Not an impact driver. Anything that goes cha 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 is an impact driver and that's causing a force to be exerted to turn this. You don't want that because there's a shear pin in there that'll eventually break. You want to use a drill and you have to start the drill slowly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to raise the RV in the back of the truck just like you would if you were going to put on a, a regular weight distribution hitch. And you're going to use the snap up bars. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and move this up, get some tension on everything and uh, go from there much higher than it needs to be way much higher now I'm going to uh, lift the weight distribution bars up um, about five inches and we'll see what that looks like what I'm measuring is the bottom of this tube which is kind of hard to see because it's black uh, to the frame and uh, of course right now it is at oh I don't know maybe uh, an eighth of an inch maybe closer to a quarter Well, maybe I'll only do four inches because that's a lot of tension considering uh, that it's up in the air and it's already putting some oomph to it. Uh, yeah, let's let's try f four inches first. And the reason is, is it could be because I have it in this other hole. Uh, I don't need to go as high. Let me go adjust the other jack four inches the exact same way. Now, whenever you find a comfortable height, and uh, you've done this for a while, you've been you know, going over a thousand miles, your RV's loaded, it's unloaded, you've got stuff in the back of your truck, you don't have stuff in the back of your truck, full tank of gas, that kind of a thing, full tanks of water in the RV. Um, whenever you get it to where you know about what the tension should be, like my old system, I knew when to add a link to the chain as far as the length of the snap-up bar and sometimes take away a link and make it a little bit shorter. Uh, I knew whenever I was running heavy and running light. Um, you can play with that and you could actually mark this tube if you want with some sort of a permanent paint marker um, because it is protected for the most part from the outside cover and uh, that way you don't have to have a tape measure out every single time when you want to get your height. Now that I've got both of those at the same height, let's go ahead and let this thing down again. All right, I definitely got it back to where it needs to be as far as the jack up in the air. Everything looks really close from what I can tell, but my driveway's just, for the most part, level, but it's off slightly. So what I'm gonna do is take this out. I'm gonna do some measurements. I'm gonna hook this thing up. I'm gonna show you how to hook it up. I'm gonna show you how to do the extension kit. Let's pick that up in just a few seconds here. Now, one of the things that you have to do whenever you hook this up 
is make sure that your chains go in between these bars. They cannot go outside the bars. They cannot go like this. They can't go like this. That's not how safety chains work. They have to go in between the bars and then of course up to where you mount it at. So I'm going to go ahead and add the extension that they you know, bought in the kit um, by removing my, my hook, putting this on instead, and then adding the links necessary to get the rest of the way. I'll show you what that looks like when I'm finished. And of course, you have an extension for your uh, trailer plug if you need that. Here you have the extension for your breakaway. And again, I don't think that I need this because I, I do have a kind of a long breakaway cable. All right, so I played around with this uh, a bit and I can tell that I don't think I need that cord extension. Um, what I'm gonna do is just put a, uh, a pin through here with a loop of some kind, kind of like this one maybe, uh, to hold this in place up on top. And of course, up there, there's no problem. There's, there's plenty of room here. Um, and then with the chains, I didn't need all of the links, obviously, uh, but I did need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven links additional. Now, I don't wanna hear these things rattling going down the road. But what I'm going to do is run with it like this for the time being, and then if I don't see any binding or any issues, uh, then at that point I'll go ahead and cut these three extra lengths off on each side. Now if you look here, um, I've, I do have them crossed and I do have them in between, <laughs> in between these weight distribution bars. So you definitely need to uh, make sure you do the same. You don't want to put it in there incorrectly because it will cause hitch damage. And guess what? The lifetime guarantee doesn't apply. That's a mistake that you made and it's clear in the manual not to do it that way. So this is basically the hitched up look uh, that I've gotten and it's pretty clean. I mean, it's a clean look.